U.S. President George W. Bush will address the American people from the East Room of the White House tonight in what's being called a farewell address. He will deliver his speech tonight at 8.01.30. That's about three minutes from now. And for more on what we can expect to hear from George W. Bush, I'm joined now by Salon Simmons. He's a professor at George Mason University's Institute for Conflict Analysis and Resolution, and he specializes in U.S. politics. Professor, good to see you as always. Nice to see you, Marcia. So this could be the last time we talk about George Bush for a while. What can we expect to hear from the outgoing president tonight? Well, the farewell address is an important part of the ritual transition from the old regime to the new one, and it's almost a natural pair with the uh, inaugural address. And we'll see him look over his legacy. This is his last time that he can address the nation as the president. And so we'll see him talk about, uh, I'm sure, the, uh, his, the ro his role in 9-11, we're going to see him talk about uh, the, the role as uh, commander-in-chief, which he has obviously enjoyed. And uh, also probably uh, talking about what kind of legacy he will leave behind. You know, he's not particularly popular right now, and he faces both, uh, both war and the prospects of depression. And so he's wanting to remind us that he's made his uh, decisions with principle rather than looking to the polls. And that's the sort of thing that he'll probably uh, remind us of as well. And so as you say, the U.S. economy is in, is in terrible shape. The country's involved mm -hmm. in two wars. The reputation mm -hmm. of the country, the credibility is damaged. Do you think that, that the president will take responsibility for this? Is it in George Bush to do that? Does a president normally do that when things are rough? Well, it sounds pretty tough, Marcia. <laughs> but, it, <laughs> the, uh, but I think that George Bush has, has throughout, I mean, things have been tough throughout his presidency. And one thing we've learned about him is that he is steadfast. And I'm sure that what he'll say tonight won't surprise us, uh, any of us, really. Uh, and I think he will not speak about things like uh, the economy, I'm sure. He's not going to speak about Pakistan or Katrina. These things won't appear. Instead, this is the beginning of the reputational entrepreneur stage, where you try to salvage your own legacy, you build a library, you uh, pro project yourself into history. And he wants to avoid, he actually has the problem of uh, appearing a bit like Lyndon Johnson, a bit like Herbert Hoover, both of whom went out fairly badly. He's going to try to seem like Truman, uh, which I think is going to be difficult, because Truman was a populist, remember, and uh, George Bush is the, is, has claimed that the have mores are his base. So this is a bit of a challenge, I think, for him moving forward. What do you think is next for George W. Bush? Well, he's already said a few things that he's going to do. He's going to write a book, and I suppose that he's going to spend some time doing that. Uh, he's going to build a library, in a, and uh, I believe maybe he said it was in Texas. Uh, he's going to retire to, to private life. Um, but he's also quite young and vigorous, so we're going to see uh, a new opportunity for uh, a post-presidency. We've had a very successful one in Jimmy Carter. Uh, Bill Clinton has done some interesting things, so we'll see what he, what he does uh, moving forward. All right, here he is, George W. Bush in his farewell address. Let's listen. George W. Bush, the 43rd President of the United States, making his final address, his farewell speech to the country that he has governed for the last eight years, speaking tonight from the East Room at the White House. So what is next for George Bush, and what, to be, what is to be made of what he said tonight? Let's go to Salon Simmons once again uh, before we go to break for some closing thoughts. Professor, what did you make of George Bush? Perhaps I'm reading into it too much, but his face to me looked lighter. It looked as though perhaps a weight had been lifted from his shoulders. Well, I'm sure that is true. It's got to be a heavy weight to serve as president of the United States, especially under these circumstances. I think we saw George Bush uh, as he always is. We saw the real man here. We saw the, the absolute faith he has in himself, the principle, the moral clarity, speaking of good and evil, uh, supporting, uh, speaking even about Afghanistan, the economy, uh, his hope for the future, uh, the idea that many will be disappointed in him, and yet that he hopes that they see that he did the right thing. This is a person who's been said is, uh, is amazingly confident in himself, and I think he truly believes that his, that his legacy will be a strong one. Many people doubt that, but uh, I think that what we see in George Bush you, is what you get, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and George Bush is a, quite a confident person. And to further that, do you think history will be kind to George Bush? I think there are many factors that, uh, that play in this, and I, I'm, I'm not so sure it will although uh, we've been surprised before. Now, remember that he, he uh, himself keeps speaking of Harry Truman, and Harry Truman went out under very similar circumstances were to be replaced by Eisenhower. And yet, as I said before, Harry Truman was a different kind of president. Harry Truman was a man of the people, and he was known for his legacy of peace and related to the United Nations uh, and, and other important initiatives in Europe. 
And so I'm not so sure that George Bush is likely to have that kind of a legacy. Although he, he is like Truman in one way, that confidence, that sense that he's, a, he's one of us who's making decisions that you would like to make if you were there, perhaps. Uh, many people, of course, are, are feel strongly the other way and can't wait for Obama to come. Uh, at least this is the last we'll see, I suppose, of this, of this president in this capacity. Now, when you look back at presidents, how do most of them feel in their final days? And, and if you had to guess, what would be going through his mind? Is there a sense of relief? Is there sadness? Is it a combination? Yeah, I think that there is a, it's just a, a mad rush of feelings, and anyone who's gone through something important and had to leave it, I think, understands that. I think there's a certain kind of melancholy here. The, the mm -hmm. attention, the focus, you get so uh, caught up in it, and, and, uh, and, I, and, it's, and, it's, and it's an entire uh, change of lifestyle that sets in. What Obama is going through on the other side, the, the loss of, him, of his self, now you regain to some extent. I think George Bush is, is facing that, and he has had a, a valedictory mood for perhaps too long. In this kind of crisis, people are wondering why he isn't perhaps doing more, uh, and yet I'm sure that uh, he's, uh, he's happy to hand this over to the, who look, the Obama, who looks fairly competent in what he's about to do. Professor Simmons, thank you very much for joining us tonight. We look forward to talking to you next week when there is a new president of the United States for your thoughts and analysis on that, the inauguration on Tuesday. Thanks very much for joining us tonight. Thanks, Marcia.